AOC class back at Republicans that uh, who tell her to return to bartending. Virgie, thank you, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, for your vision. Chicago for your energy. Thank you, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls for your vision. And thank you, Joe Biden, for your leadership. You know, six years ago. Is that ketchup on a glizzy in Chicago, bro? I will literally f throw hands, okay? am I supposed to put on a goddamn hot dog if not ketchup and mustard no ketchup <laughs> yeah ain't no way that's happening okay what are people doing in Chicago all right let's keep watching AOC I'm taking omelet orders as a waitress in New York City I didn't have health insurance my family was fighting off foreclosure and we were struggling with bills after my dad passed away unexpectedly from cancer like millions of Americans, we were just looking for an honest shake. And we were tired of a cynical politics that seemed blind to the realities of working people. It was then, only through the miracles of democracy and community, that the good people of the Bronx and Queens chose someone like me to elect them in Congress. And America, in my heart, I know from that same cloth of hope and aspiration, we will also elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls as President and Vice President of the United States of America. I am here tonight because America has before us a rare and precious opportunity. In Kamala Harris, we have a chance to elect a president who is for the middle class because she is from the middle class. She understands the urgency of rent checks and groceries and prescriptions. She is as committed to our reproductive and civil rights as she is to taking on corporate greed. And she is working tirelessly to secure a ceasefire in Gaza and bringing hostages home. So, is she? I mean, I don't know why she said that. I don't know if we know that or not. That was... In my estimation, this is the worst room to be saying this. There's so many creators for Kamala around me right now. But honestly, I don't know. Like, I don't know what she knows that I don't. But if there is a genuine momentum and a genuine change of pace and, and a difference coming from the Kamala campaign in terms of what she wants to do differently, she should communicate it. She should say her piece. She should be out and about about it. Do you think they'll carrot on a stick on the ceasefire? No, they haven't carrot. They've only carroted. They've never shown the stick. This is the issue. There is a stick there, but they've done the bear hug strategy and have not strayed away from the bear hug strategy. Okay? That's just objectively the truth. That's all they've done. If there's a change of pace, if there's a different method, I haven't seen it. And if I haven't seen it and I'm super f tuned into this, that means they're not communicating it. Or it doesn't exist. The notion that like Benjamin Netanyahu will uh, attack Iran and draw America into this battle because uh, Kamala Harris came out and, and actually uh, put like a firm commitment to the ceasefire negotiations is ridiculous. If that card is on the table, then you have to remove that card from the table entirely. That's what I'm advocating for. That's what many people, including those dudes that put up the Stop Arming Israel banner, are advocating for which is take the cards off the table so Israel knows that it cannot actually up this entire election cycle. And that's uh, that's not a perspective that I'm alone on. Um, yeah, here is 
Gary Peters talking to Politico. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Michigan uh, Senator Gary Peters. Here it is. Talking to Politico, it- saying exactly those same things that I was just saying. It's important that Vice President Harris show that there are some differences or at least distinctions between her policy when it comes to the Middle East and Gaza with President Biden. Well, it, it shows that she's her own person. She thinks her own way. She ought to do that, you think? Yes, she, she's going she's gonna to be, she is going to be our next president. And she has to start telling folks this is where she comes from, what she believes in. Uh, and uh, that's going to be uh, natural. So there's going to be things that she agrees. There's going to be things you don't agree. And when you it comes agree. to Michigan, when it comes to Michigan, though, you think it's important for her to show that distinction on her views toward Gaza with President Biden? Yeah, if she has those views, she has to be clear about whatever those views are. She'll have to make... Doesn't she? Yeah, if she may, if she, and I think she has differences, yeah. Yeah. and she'll talk about it. Have you, Back to authenticity. Be who you are. Yeah. Be what's in right. your, your God. Tell us what, what motivates you, what drives you. People want to want to see that. Will you convey to her at some point uh, in the next couple of weeks that she ought to do that? Yes. Oh, yeah. if I have a chance to, yeah. I'm sure you will. What is this? My guess is if they were going to make a stance, they couldn't do it in the lead up to A15 start of negotiations. They can't do it during the negotiations. So maybe after, assuming they don't succeed. If they if these negotiations fall, if these negotiations fall apart, which it seemingly is the same exact holding pattern that the democratic party has been like comfortable with uh in terms of like israel constantly being like yeah we're gonna add new conditions and also um we're just all we're still not gonna say yes to the new conditions that we've added if that's the case then the negotiations are going to fail and then iran is going to inevitably retaliate if iran inevitably retaliates it is it is is entirely up to it is entirely in israel's hands to to respond in kind or uh obviously uh respond with uh with an escalation because it won't just be iran retaliating it's going to be lebanon it's going to be hezbollah israel's been primed to invade lebanon for months at this point other people other than peters have said this at the dnc too she should break from biden but they also say it has to wait to see how the ceasefire deal goes ceasefire first and then break on biden later exactly what megaphonic said is what a few dim congress people said yeah that was a position that this chat, including iDejder and Megaphonics, would have considered to be, like, insane, right? Now, that's a position that they've warmed up to, as a matter of fact, are saying them, them, uh, they are saying this position themselves. Democratic politicians are saying this themselves. How do we get here? Because people are still actively pushing for it. So, obviously, people should keep pushing, and this, this distinction should happen sooner rather than later, especially while the negotiations are still happening except that's what blinken is doing that's what anthony blinken is doing this is something that i wanted to talk about a bunch of people came up to me and asked me about anthony blinken saying that um it it was actually israel that said yes to this proposal and hamas had actually been sullying it again and my immediate reaction was i don't even know anything going on about the proposal but i do not trust anthony blinken because he has a history of doing exactly this just lying at the behest of israel Okay, precisely what he has done, precisely what he continues to do. Just straight up, no other way to look at this, just openly f- lying, lying to the media, lying to the Western press, specifically at the behest of Israel, outflanking Israel at times, out fr- outflanking the Israeli officials to a degree that even yesterday, according to Axios reporting, Last night, after Anthony Blinken came out and said Israel actually agreed to the terms and conditions of the ceasefire, which they had actually tried to manipulate and and change the terms and conditions on, which Hamas said no to because obviously it's not the same ceasefire process that they originally put forward in March and uh, and reiterated their commitment to time and time again. Anthony Blinken just came out and just openly lied. Okay, Blinken is literally just Netanyahu's personal lawyer. He will go against Israeli officials to defend Netanyahu. Exactly. It's just crazy. It's just, it is so, it is so ridiculous. And guess what? There is actually an impact in Western media to this because of how consistently he has done this because he did this over and over again. This is not the first time, not the second time, nor is it the fourth time that Anthony Blinken has outflanked Israeli officials and like routinely lied to Western media about how this is actually Hamas that's sullying the deal. It's actually Israel that is agreeing to this proposal, blah, blah, blah. So much so that even on NPR... Oh, so much so that even on NPR earlier this morning, they said something that I've never... Yeah, they just dropped the glizzy thing. Okay, calm down. It's fine. 
on NPR this morning, I heard them openly say, Anthony Blinken has often been at odds with Israeli officials in terms of claiming that Israel is interest, Israel has agreed to a ceasefire proposal. That is literally, that's it. You have gone so far in your, uh, in, in, in how many times you have lied to the American press that even these guys that would normally collaborate with you willingly, okay, even those guys are like, okay, well, we have to save face. We have to literally be like, you know, an institution that is at least reporting on the truth a little bit, okay? <laughs> Axios is reporting on the matter. Netanyahu ceasefire doublespeak. Dovish with the U.S., hawkish with negotiators. This is, by the way, from Barack Ravid, okay? Israel did the exact same thing that they've done so far on this ceasefire negotiations conversation. They went, into the ta they went up to the table and they said, oh, that ceasefire proposal that you put forward, okay? That ceasefire proposal that you put forward, guess what? We actually want to add new conditions onto that ceasefire proposal that you said was our proposal. Those conditions obviously completely destroy the ceasefire narrative in general. It com you cannot have a ceasefire without ceasing fire, right? He has shown no signs of fucking draw uh, dialing back the, the uh, metric ton of munitions he's dumping onto Gaza. Okay, but beyond that, but beyond that, here's the Axios reporting uh, summarization. Others also baffled by Blinken today. The statement baffled some Israeli officials who told Axios that Netanyahu's hard lines are actually making a deal much harder to reach. If you read Israeli reporting on this, as do as I do on a daily basis, you will see the actual reality of the matter, which is Benjamin Netanyahu's own personal convictions and his own personal refusal to actually come to terms with any kind of permanent ceasefire, okay? And he's doing that because there's internal pressures happening within Israel, and also because he doesn't want to go to jail. That's the short and sweet of it, okay? And it's crazy. It is crazy that Anthony Blinken and Western media up until this point have willingly just lied straight up. No other way to put it. Just openly, capital L, lied about the process. That's why every single time this stuff happens, people are just genuinely shocked. They're like, I don't understand. Isn't Hamas actually the deal? It's like, bro, it is their deal. It is the same proposal that they put forward in the month of February. Biden reiterated it. Okay. You're surrounded by this media. Can you talk to them about some of this? No, because the media that I'm surrounded by are all of my friends. Okay. They already are in agreement with me and they know how this stuff works. You, you think I'm like surrounded by Jake Tapper, what are you, crazy? You think he's going to listen to me? You think I'm going to uh, talk to Wolf Blitzer and sh The media are not the top-level power brokers shattered. They're not in the negotiating rooms. No, I, in terms of, like, the way that the media covers it. Um, it's so sinister. My Zionist family members think Hamas has rejected every deal in Israel, has accepted every deal. It's so dumb. The deals are Israel has accepted aren't ceasefires. It's pure upside for Israel and pure downside for Gaza. Meanwhile, Hamas has literally said they support the original... White House three-phase proposal, which would actually be a win-win for both sides. Exactly. But that's the reason why the media does what it's doing. That's the reason why Anthony Blinken keeps repeating over and over again that it's actually uh, not Israel, but Hamas that are ruining the proposals. And because Hamas obviously is a terror group and blah, 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 that it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's just like, you cannot, you cannot get people over, <clears throat> you cannot get people over a certain age demographic to actually uh to to actually come to terms with that they just can't this is oslo accords all over again yes the difference however in this circumstance is that there are there is too much of a diversity of media there's too much of a democratization of information dissemination so obviously it's impossible to keep up that narrative in the same way that you could in previous uh in previous generations right there is no like, there was no Hasanabi equivalent, you know what I mean? And it's not just me, obviously. There, there's no TikTok equivalent. There's none of that back in the day. So people, whatever people said about the deal went. And even though there were many books written about the matter, obviously showcasing that the American position that was, was awfully, uh, awfully defensive of, of uh, Israel's interests and, like, routinely Israel sullied the talks and then they could just, like, openly lie and say it was actually the Palestinian envoys that broke the, broke the peace talks, it didn't matter because most people don't read those books you know how we say you know how we always say like perception becomes reality that was this that was still the case back then as well and you could cultivate a perception and a different frame of an issue 
that is like dead, dead on, dead the rights, completely busted and one-sided, and it still wouldn't matter because there was a couple outlets. They are all the only people that are covering the news, and they could just frame your reality in in whichever way they wanted to. And that's what you're experiencing right now. This is why I've talked endlessly about the so-called peace deals, the so-called peace process, right? I call it the so-called peace process for this reason, because that process was simply to to basically extend a, a, a cynical olive branch that uh, was used by the Israeli right to continue settlement expansion in the West Bank, okay? And that's precisely what's going on. And this right here, this right here, this conversation, this back and forth going on is a continuation of that. They're like, oh yeah, we're trying to do a ceasefire. We're trying to do a peace talk. Oh yeah, Israel wants to do it. Netanyahu is totally down. Like Anthony Blinken openly coming out and just saying that Benjamin Netanyahu agreed to a new deal, a new ceasefire deal, when he obviously, Benjamin Netanyahu obviously didn't, even though, even though the new ceasefire proposal is not even the actual original ceasefire proposal. It is a new deal that they have also tried to deliberately, like the Israeli uh, envoys have added poison pills onto because they're getting pressured by Benjamin Netanyahu that they can't make certain concessions to the Palestinian side. The Philadelphia Corridor, the Netzarim Corridor, these, these are areas that are currently occupied by the Israeli occupying force. These areas need to be cleared of Israeli occupying force. That is a major point of contention with Benjamin Netanyahu. He's like, no, we're going to have permanent occupation in the literal Rafa border with, with uh, Egypt. That's ridiculous. U.S. bridging proposal would allow reduced Israeli troops to remain on Gaza-Egypt border. That's what I'm saying. It's still ridiculous. That is that is a non-starter for understandable reasons. Do you see what I mean? As a non-starter. As a non-starter. Egypt is our vassal, okay? Of course they're going to say whatever the fuck we want them to say. Anyway, let's get back to AOC. In Kamala Harris. It's so hard for me to not sidestep into Israel and like dive into that issue head first. But we were originally talking about AOC and how she said Kamala Harris is working tirelessly to do a ceasefire. I see a leader who understands. I see a leader with a real commitment to a better future for working families. And Chicago, we have to help her win. Because we know that Donald Trump would sell this country for a dollar if it meant lining his own pockets and greasing the palms of his Wall Street friends. And I, for one, am tired about, of hearing about how a two-bit union buster thinks of himself as more of a patriot than the woman who fights every single day to lift working people out from under the boots of greed, trampling on our way of life. The truth is Don So good. Oh my God. You cannot love this country. Live Twitter comparing AOC to Obama. I know. This is the Obama becoming a star convention speech. I mean, it's true. I think, um, I hope not all the way, you know, in terms of looking like a progressive and then switching over and like nullifying any kind of progressive momentum. If you only fight for the wealthy and big business. <laughs> to love this country is to fight for its people. Obama was never progressive. It was always openly a centrist, yeah. Openly centrist positions such as, um, I'm going to get health care to all Americans. I'm going to shut down Guantanamo Bay. I'm going to pull out of Iraq. You know, when he said hope and change, he was saying like, you know, I hope that one day we can be more centrist. Bro, come on. We don't need to like reinvent reality here. Okay. No, he was a very progressive candidate and a very centrist president. Okay, but if you were going to act like he was not a progressive candidate, you're crazy. Obama was very poor Palestine before. Even in his book, he couldn't do much because APAC was too strong. I, I mean, yeah, he literally would used to hang out with, uh, with, with Saeed and Rashid Khalidi. So I know Steve Kerr mentioned Steph Curry. He did the sleeping emoji. All people, working people, everyday Americans like bartenders and factory workers and fast food cashiers. 
who punch a clock and are on their feet all day in some of the toughest jobs out there. Can people hear me when I'm yelling? You know, ever since I got elected, Republicans have attacked me by saying that I should go back to bartending. But let me tell you, I'm happy to any day of the week because there is nothing wrong with working for a living. Imagine, imagine having leaders in the White House who understand that. Leaders like Kamala. You hit him with the put the fries in the bag, bro, is actually classes. She's like, it's actually classes to say, just put the fries in the bag. I mean, she's not wrong. And Tim. But Chicago, just because the choice is clear to us does not mean that the path will be easy. Over the next 78 days, we will have to pour every ounce, every minute, every moment into making history on November 5th. But we cannot send Kamala and Tim to the White House alone. Together, we must also elect strong Democratic majorities in the House and in the Senate so that we can deliver on an ambitious agenda for the people. Because if you are a working parent trying to afford rent and child care, Kamala is for you. If you are a senior who had to go back to work because your retirement didn't stretch far enough, Kamala is for you. If you're an immigrant family just starting your American story, Kamala is for you. America. When we knock on our neighbor's door, organize our communities, and elect Kamala Harris to the presidency on November 5th, we will send a loud message that the people of this nation will not go back. We choose a new path and open the door to a new day, one that is for the people and by the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. One thing that stood out to me, of course, uh, given that there was a union leader that spoke at the Republican National Convention, uh, and because Donald Trump, uh, Shermichael, has done a lot to appeal to uh, working class mm -hmm. uh, voters in a way that you know the Democratic Party used to have a lot more sway in the union halls outside Detroit than they do. Uh, we heard from uh, Sean Fain, uh, but we also heard from uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, uh, whose uh, speech stood out, I thought, in the in a very long evening of speech. Speeches. And here's what she uh, had to say about Republican attacks on her, just to give you kind of a little bit of a taste uh, of what her address was like. Watch. Uh. Ever since I got elected, Republicans have attacked me by saying that I should go back to bartending. But let me tell you, I'm happy to any day of the week because there is nothing wrong with working for a living. Talk about speeches that are going to live on social media. I mean, yeah, I guess that clip will live on social media. But in terms of the Democratic Party uniting all of its various uh, factions, I mean, we just saw two members of the squad lose their seat. Uh, you're seeing a lot of young progressives who are protesting because they're not happy about uh, the party leadership's position on uh, Israel and Iran and uh, the Palestinian people. And so there, there are clearly some issues within the party. Perhaps those issues aren't um, as clear as some of ours are right and i would i would agree with that but to pretend that there is complete unity uh, i'm not sure if that's that's accurate but i, I want to just touch on president biden quickly here i mean it does take a certain level of magnanimity to be in a very very powerful position and be willing to give it up
up. Uh, and I really just hope the American people, as we are in this divided time, really take the opportunity to just reflect on that. Uh, I know there are a lot of differences about the president. There are differences on some of his policy positions. Uh, but at the end of the day, we do look to our leaders, Casey, to give us examples of who we can be under the worst conditions and even in the best conditions. And I think President Biden has certainly exuded that uh, as a leader. Good evening, America, and good evening. It was like the swag got on because of Israel. And it was Let's talk about Biden. Sick. Thanks, ma'am. Good take. Anyway, here's Sean Fain's speech of the DNC. To the people that make this world move, the working class. My goat. I'm working on um, hopefully being able to get a Sean Fain. Hopefully get a Sean Fain interview. On behalf of one million active and retired members of the UAW, I am honored to support Kamala Harris and Tim Walls to be our next president and vice president. And I want to say thank you to Joe Biden for making history by walking the picket line with the UAW. For the UAW and for working class people everywhere, this election comes down to one question. Which side are you on? On one side, we have Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, who have stood shoulder to shoulder with the working class. Why is everyone at the DNC texting me to get in contact with us on the home? Boy, get an assistant or answer your DMs. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Yes, Alex. Lol overruled is my assistant. It ain't like he's got a job right now, bro. <laughs> Probably too soon. Too soon. I'm sorry. Bro got fired the other day. Up. That's when you're a, that's when you TikTok too much. Hey, so that French dude that interviewed you yesterday, I know him IRL. He's not actually French, nor he's a journalist. He's an aspiring comedian from Iowa that's trying to do a French version of Borat or some cringe shit like that. It's a bit and not a funny one. Really? He got fired for showing the super dirty office. Yeah, I saw. I heard. Dude just wanted to post a photo of the office view. I know. What do you think about the reports that Trump is talking with Netanyahu behind the scenes to prevent a ceasefire to help him win the election? Lolo says, check DMs. I saw. All right, let's continue. Class. On the other side, we have Trump and Vance. Two lap dogs for the billionaire class who only serve themselves. So for us in the labor movement, it's real simple. Kamala Harris is one of us. She's a fighter for the working class. And Donald Trump is a scab. Not a scam, dude. A scab, buh, 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 buh. S C A B. The term for those who cross the picket line. How the f are there people in this community that don't not that don't know this? Anyway, it's okay that you didn't know. Uh, but it's B as in bear. Scab. S C A B. I mean, Trump is a scam too, but you know, and scum. Did you ever think the union terminology would become so prevalent at the DNC? Um, maybe in the past. I never would have thought that. I mean, the last five, the last like 10 years, I would not have thought so. I mean, it's, it's become almost overnight, like, uh, like something that people, something that people just like take not only for granted, but like expect the shift from identity politics in 2016 to more labor focused politics in 2024 is great. Yeah. That's not. <laughs> That's not just my opinion, that's a fact. All we have to do is look at the track record. The NC uses the rhetoric of activism doesn't mean that much. No, it's different. This is not just the rhetoric of activism. What are you talking about? This is like, this is not just the rhetoric of activism. This is also literally like, it, like an actual terminology used by a 
union leader, bro. Get the fuck out of here. This is not like this is not like Kamala Harris or or any number of different Democratic Party politicians using emancipatory language. This is a dude who actually melts scabs. Yeah. Sean Fain has uh, doesn't just speak class war, but he also engages in class war. There's a difference between him and a politician that is trying to, I don't know, win favors. A politician is trying to win favors within the uh, uh, base of support. Mike Pillow at the DNC. Oh my God. No way. It's not the machine. That's why we're not having God. What the fuck is Michael Pillow doing here, bro? There ain't no way they invited his ass. March. Mike Pillow is here. Yeah, Mr. Pillow, Mike Pillow, Mike Lindell. No, we, we're not going to find him. What? What? Yo, the Democrats invited everybody, bro. Maybe it's not that weird that they let me uh, get in. Yeah, it's not a rhetorical device when it's a literal union leader. It's a promise. Yeah. Bro cannot get into the DNC. It looks like he's outside. Yeah, you know what? What? The 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 no matter what happens, uh, my goal is to get this country to the best election. So if somebody wins, okay. we want to you okay. Okay. vote. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's, let's, let's continue that conversation. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Let's continue that conversation. Let's continue that conversation. So we what is wrong with early voting? We, we need to get voting. So tell me what's wrong with early voting. The biggest thing right now is the computers because it's all done. Bro, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? I want you guys to say that's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be here we're going in there incognito without the mustache, y'all. Listen up. Yeah, this we is the power. Hey, this is the Wait, he's going to shave the mustache to go into the DNC? Oh, hell no. Mike Pillow looks like he's mainlining his drugs lately. A little bit of crack dust and is over. You understand me? I think the DNC is officially starting, by the way, because shit is getting active behind me. It's getting loud as f Hold on, I'm gonna look back. Bro, look at it. Look at it. This is like happening right behind me, bro. Y'all tell him to keep them things quiet. Keep them quiet. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, turn it down. Turn it down. I'm trying to stream over here, bro. Chill. Um, Hold on. Let me see if I can like pull up the the does anyone have the live stream? Day two beginning now, that's why, yeah. Bro, look at this. There's a hella delay on this though. Please stand if you are able for this evening's invocation. Offered by Bro, just turn around. Beleaguered and bereft. There's like a, there's like a three second delay on it. From degradation to dignity, from darkness to light. Holy one, Help us write America's redemption story, a story of ceaseless striving toward a true multiracial democracy rooted Politics in equal justice, where every person is treated as unique, mighty, and worthy of love. In this story, politics is not a vehicle for repression. That's the delay. That's how many delay. That's how many seconds profit, the delay is. But a call to service. This story counters extremism with capaciousness and compassion. API queer and straight. It rejects the inevitability of war, affirming that every one of us, Muslim and Jew, Christian, black, white, Latino, AAPI, queer and straight, Israeli and Palestinian, deserves to live. Anyway, we're not going to, I'm not going to watch this IRL. Um, why aren't you standing? Wait, what? They asked to the stand or something. I, I'm not gonna. What are you crazy? Oz, can I get a little laugh about? They gave everyone Jill Green signs the whole last. Uh, Green Jill signs the whole last night. Yeah, like Green Party's Jill Stein. You can pre-watch for us. Tell us what she's gonna say before she speaks. Yeah, but that's not very entertaining. I have I have other stuff to cover. Okay. All right. Let's continue with this from yesterday's speech. When Donald Trump was president, corporate America ran wild. I feel I feel bad that they're Donald like trying to listen Trump to the speech in this fucking room. Did not bring back the auto And I'm listening industry. to Sean Fain instead from yesterday. When Donald Trump was president, auto play. Oh shit! It's because I turned this on so I can. Bro, I'm getting the headphones, bro. Chill, chill, bro. Chill. Headphones, 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 headphones. Trump told workers in Lordstown, Ohio, that he would be bringing all the auto jobs back, and Trump did nothing. In 2019, General Motor workers went on strike for 40 days for good jobs 
and a better life. And Trump did nothing. Talk is cheap. Disappointed, was expecting to watch this live, not yesterday's recap. Bro, okay, I don't want to yell too much, but like, why the do you care about like the current, per nice like protect. the, like people praying and like saying the Pledge of Allegiance, like what are, what's wrong with you? They're saying the Pledge of Allegiance right now. Is that, you give a shit about that? Is that what you want to hear? Like, w what's wrong with you? Yeah, they just got done with the Pledge of Allegiance. You'll see it now on stage. There you go. Oh my God, I'm disappointed. I didn't want your reaction to yesterday's stream. But in 2019, you know who was on the picket line standing shoulder to shoulder with auto workers? I'll give you a clue. Her initials Nerd. are Kamala Harris. In 2023, who helped bring jobs back to Lordstown, Ohio? Kamala Harris. And in 2024, who will stand with the working class in our fight for justice? Kamala Harris. And that's the difference. Donald Trump is all talk, and Kamala Harris walks the walk. In the words of the great American poet, Nellie, it's getting hot in here. He's a little bit of a cornball himself too, but hey, it's all good, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the chairman. It's hot in here because you're fired up and you're fed up, and the American working class is fired up and fed up. The American working class is in a fight for our lives. And if you don't believe me, just last night, blue collar workers, the UAW members at Cornell University had to walk out on strike for a better life because they're fighting corporate greed. And our only hope is to attack corporate greed head on. Corporate greed turns blue collar blood, sweat and tears into Wall Street stock buybacks and CEO jackpots. It causes inflation. It hurts workers. It hurts consumers and it hurts America. And corporate greed is alive and well in the auto industry. You know, last fall, we achieved life-changing gains in our strike at the big three. We even won a commitment to- How come no claps? Oh, sh There is the, the musical portion just started. The musical portion just started behind me. You guys heard you guys heard this earlier in the morning. Okay. It's such a weird thing that like there's something so massive happening behind me and I'm trying to pay attention to what the fuck's going on in front of me, but it's like impossible. Here, I'll 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 take off the noise gate for a second so you can hear it. It's weird, bro. God damn. God damn. Is Patty LaBelle. Are you behind the glass? No, there's no glass behind me. That glass is the other box that you're seeing, separating this box from the other one. It's all the, wait, I think there's a, all the Dems who died. It's a VIP box, chat, for the Bulls games. I don't think this was a smart thing that the DNC did, by the way. Teamsters president, no invite from DNC to speak yet. And he went on Fox News to talk about it, but it's like, I, I don't think that was a smart thing. I think they should have still invited him. Bro, he's the leader of the Teamsters chat. That's not like a, that's crazy. You can't just like, you can't demand unconditional loyalty. Like you gotta, you gotta put a little bit of respect. I mean, I, I know, I know he's a dickhead. 
I know he's a dickhead, but like, there's no, he's a dickhead for going to the RNC. You guys know this. I, I criticize him quite extensively, but the idea that, the idea that you're, you know, that you're just like not going to invite the f leader of the Teamsters of the Democratic Party is crazy. Talking over Patty, shame. Okay, calm down, dude. Okay. Is, is Jimmy Carter's grandson. That's crazy. Man, he is so old. How are the protests outside? There are no protests outside. Not today. This guy's a traitor to his union. I don't think that would be a good example for the Dems. Dude, he's still the f leader, okay? Unless you have a plan to thwart him and like uh, push for elections in the Teamsters, one that he would definitely lose before the election is still crazy. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a bad move. I think it's a mistake not having him. Um, anyway, I'm going to put the noise gate back on and we're going to continue doing coverage.